This little single board computer is screaming fast. It combines a fast processor faster than an Apple Mac mini into a form factor not much bigger than a Raspberry Pi. Beyond a fast CPU, it supports Arduino and has GPIO pins, so you can go do projects on it. There is a load of expansion and networking on board, and this thing can even support a form of ECC memory. Well, this might be small, there's a lot here, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a Latte Panda Sigma. If you're like me, you probably have a bunch of Raspberry Pis laying around doing various tasks, but sometimes you might wish, well, maybe that Raspberry Pi was a little bit faster. Now, there are certainly a wide variety of different options on the market with things like Rockchip and all those other types of ARM processors, but sometimes, you know, you just wanna go fast. And in the past, going fast in a small system like this meant that you were probably going to use only e-cores, and so you're always going to be limited in speed and features. So I have to say that I was completely shocked with the overall performance and even things like just how quiet this system was. And I have to say, I've owned a lot of single board computers over the years, and one of the things that I don't like about leaving the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is you always have to worry about support. Like, is the OS going to be supported? Is a board going to be supported over time? And one of the nice things with this is that because it's a 13th gen Intel Core, processor, I mean, it'll run any OS out of the box. It was super easy to go set up Linux and Windows and everything on this. Now, this thing is super awesome, but I do want to point out that this is a review unit that we were sent to go and do this video. At the same time, we never let vendors read STH content or CSTH content before it goes live, so it's being done completely editorially independently like it should be. And of course, we have a whole bunch of things that we connected this to that we'll show you in a little bit. So if you do want to support us, you can always go join the STH YouTube channel and become a member down below. Any help, is always appreciated. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so normally we have external then internal hardware overviews, but uh, th this thing is kind of a almost bare board. So we're just gonna do this all at once. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that I did put the included uh, standoffs on here. And then, uh, you know, folks are just gonna ask like, what's the size of this thing? And I thought the easiest way to convey the size is with a hard drive. I mean, if you take a hard drive, you plop it on top, this is a three and a half inch hard drive size SBC. So first off, let's start with what's under here. And I'm not gonna take this off real time, but we do have a photo of the CPU under this. This is an Intel Core i5 1340p, which is a Raptor Lake edition processor. This is the same type of processor that you'd find in other mini PCs, even things like laptops and things like that. Now the Core i5 1340p is a 12 core processor. Now there are four P or performance cores, which have hyper threading. So you get eight threads out of those, and then you get another eight efficiency cores. The graphics on board here is the Intel XE graphics. Now this system, unlike a lot of systems, doesn't use SODIM memory. Instead, the memory is soldered onto the board itself and we get 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 6400 memory. So on the plus side, we get more performance. On the negative side, we lose upgradability. I will note that this is the 16 gigabyte version, but there is a 32 gigabyte version that I think is on pre-order. And frankly, if I were getting this system, I would want 32 gigabytes. And although we get more memory performance, on the flip side, I really like to be able to upgrade things, especially on something like this, where you're saying like, hey, we have Arduino and like, you know, have GPIO and all that kind of stuff, and it's hackable, all that, and then you can't upgrade your memory. So that, that's just kind of a bummer. Still, I understand the design decision. I would just get 32 gigs if I bought this. Now, on top of that processor, we get this little cooler, and I'll let you hear this when we get to our power and cooling thing, but I'll just tell you that this is not loud by any means. Um, This is actually sitting right over here on the side, uh, on this table back here, and I was like looking around, I was like, wait, where the heck did I put that Latte Panda? And this thing was running and I didn't even hear it. Okay, so let's go through some of the ports and stuff that you have on here. So first thing you're gonna see that we have two USB 2 ports and then we have a power button. A fun thing is that this little power button that you see here was actually just kind of floating around in the box uh, and some of the pictures don't even have it on. So you have to install this yourself, which I, I just don't really like that level of hackability. I'd rather just have this thing, you know, already working. One feature that we didn't get to test, but it's here is a micro SIM slot, which you can see just under the cooler and above the PCB. And the fact that this has Thunderbolt 4 means that you can expand this with everything. I mean, you could put GPU, you could put networking, you could also do something like put an AI accelerator, all that kind of stuff because you have that port. So I just feel like this gives it another level of flexibility beyond what you typically would see with something like a Raspberry Pi. One other little thing that we found uh, just behind this power button is that there's 
there's this little tiny like like button right here and that's actually the reset button for the microchip coprocessor that is something you typically don't see on mini pcs okay so looking at the other side we have our headset jack then we have two usb 3 and these are 10 gigabit per second type a ports we then get our ethernet ports which are two two and a half gig ethernet ports and these network ports use the Intel i225V for networking. Next to our network ports, we have our HDMI 2.1 output. So you can go drive pretty high resolution displays out of this. Next, we have another type C port, and this is also a Thunderbolt 4 port. So we get two Thunderbolt ports, one on the front and one on the back, which is awesome. These Thunderbolt ports also will do things like run uh, alt display mode or display port mode. So you can run displays off of them as well. Next, we have our DC power jack, and then we have a power in with a connector that we don't have the mating connector for. And if all that IO didn't sound exciting enough, well, there's even more just on this top part. So here you can see our GPIO block and this GPIO block, I'm gonna let you go, guys go and like look up the specs on that if you're really interested. Um, but, but that gives you the ability to go do things like run Arduino projects and go, you know, just create stuff out of that, which is just fun if you're into that kind of stuff. And then also we have a SATA seven pin port here. So um, you can also put a hard drive, you know, this is the size of a hard drive. So uh, maybe, you know, you could add one there, I guess, I don't know. And then even with our Latte Panda backplate, you'll see that we have an RTC battery header. And then also on the other side, we have an e DisplayPort uh, connector as well as a touch connector. Now, liberating the Latte Panda Sigma from its base uh, requires four little screws and washers to be pulled off and then you can just pop it out. And once we do that, you can see that there are little spots for thermal pads here. But then, uh, you know, the really cool thing about this is the fact that there's a ton of expansion on the bottom here. Now these are labeled on the board, but we get two M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs. One is a PCIe Gen 3 and one is a PCIe Gen 4 slot. We also get a third one though, which is a B key, which can either have SATA or it can run, I think as PCIe Gen 3 by one. And then that doesn't even include the fact that this has Wi-Fi. And this is using the Intel AX211, which means it's Wi-Fi 6E and it's a CNVIO version. You can see that we have our little CR1220 battery. And not only is this expandable, but just a great example of how hackable the system is, is that there's this little comm selector switch, which lets you pick between RS-232 and RS-485 just by going like this. Now, if you get a version that's not pre-configured, well, then you won't get the Wi-Fi, you won't get the SSD, but if you do get the configured version, you'll get this Wi-Fi 6E and also a half terabyte SSD. At this point, you've probably noticed one thing that I hate about the system. And that is the fact that sure, you get your Wi-Fi 6E, but um, unless you have very good Wi-Fi, it's going to be a struggle to use it because, well, there's no antenna hooked up to this. Instead, um, well, they give you a little, uh, little ESD pouch that has two little antennas that you can stick somewhere wherever you want. You may think like, hey, let's go stick them on the base plate. But then remember that if you do want to service the bottom of this, then, uh, well, you'll be de-sticking these or pulling them out. And these things are just such a pain to put in. Next, let's talk about performance of this. So the performance of this is pretty good. It's about what we would expect from a mini PC, even though it's in a single board computer form factor. And because this is a 12 core, 16 thread processor, it's actually pretty fast with Raptor Lake. It's actually faster than the M2 Mac mini that we have sitting over here. Now, because of the LPDDR5 memory and the Intel Iris Xe graphics in this generation, you actually get a pretty decent GPU. This is probably not gonna go replace your RTX 4090 by any means, but on the other hand, it is certainly perfectly capable of doing just about anything desktop related that you want. The other side to it though, is that you also have things like AV1 decode, which is awesome. And with all of these display outputs, you can do a total of three 4K displays, plus also the, uh, I think EDP can do like 1080 or something like that. So overall, you could actually put up to four displays on this little thing. And before we get to power consumption noise, I just want to point out real quick that we did put Windows 11 Pro, we also put Ubuntu, and then we put Proxmox V8 on here, and they all worked no problem. But I think the power and noise on these are completely fascinating. So let's go take a look at that. Now the power situation on this is exactly the personality of this Latte Panda because you would expect that there is something very flexible. And of course, we're not even using the power in header that's over here because we don't have that connector. But what comes with the unit is you actually get a nice Delta power brick. That's a 90 watt power brick, which is absolutely plenty for this little system. But if you don't wanna use the DC power brick, one question that a lot of folks ask us is, well, can you use the USB-C in? And uh, the answer is most certainly yes. 
And so we're actually running this thing off of USB-C power right now. And we have our USB-C power in to the Thunderbolt port right here. And then we have our little power Z meter here, which we'll link in the description if you want to learn more about that. And that can show us our power consumption. Idle power consumption, you'll see from our fancy power Z meter that we'll link in the description is somewhere in that maybe 4.8 to maybe seven or so watt range. We're running Windows 11 Pro. So there are background processes that kick up every once in a while and you know cause that fluctuation. We also have our sound meter set up with a little action camera so you can see how loud it is from about one meter away. Alex will overlay that, but I wanna let you hear this thing at idle just to hear how quiet it is. So in our 34 dBA noise floor studio at one meter, this thing is registering about 34.7 to about a little over 35 dBA. So it's really not making much of an impact. And frankly, if it's one meter away from you, you're probably not gonna hear it at idle. Now kicking things up, you'll see the power consumption jumps pretty dramatically and it's running from anywhere from maybe about 44 to just over 50 watts. It's definitely not a you know 90 watt or 100 watt like we've been seeing some mini PCs hit recently. It's definitely a lot lower power than that, but it is also way more power than a Raspberry Pi. And let me just let you hear this real quick. The noise has definitely picked up, but it's not necessarily the worst, especially given that this is the 100% noise. Overall, I think this is very reasonable. Now with all of these, I like to have key lessons learned. And I think that there are two here. First off, I just think that this performance package and like all the, the you know, IO that you have on here with like Thunderbolt, we have multiple M.2 slots and all that kind of stuff. And even down to things like having two, two and a half gig ethernet ports. I think that overall, this thing has a ton of just IO and it's just awesome to have this much power in a single board computer. I mean, let's face it, in a three and a half inch hard drive footprint, this is way more interesting than a hard drive, right? But the second and perhaps more interesting thing is that this also has an Arduino component. You'll notice that in the specs, you have a coprocessor. The coprocessor is a microchip AT Mega 32U4MU. And by default, our system came with the Arduino IDE already built in. So you could do things like, you know, pull down a blinky light program and start going immediately with this system, which I thought was really cool and really easy to use. Now, if you don't care about Arduino, then I guess, you know, you probably don't care about the feature, but if you do care about it, or you might be, you know, Arduino interested, well, this is an opportunity to do that. Of course, a lot of folks are gonna say, well, hey, there are all these lower power platforms for that. Of course they are, but also just remember that this is connected to a giant processor and storage array. So it might be actually pretty interesting to combine those. This is not just a mini PC. This also has that hackable component to it, which I think is really interesting. I lied. There's a third one that I want to talk about, and that is this ECC thing. So as we were doing the review, Latte Panda sent us this long guide, and we'll just kind of scroll through it here so you can see it. But uh, you can actually enable in-band ECC on this platform. Now, if you don't know what in-band ECC is, it's a little bit different than our typical ECC memory that you would see. And I just realized I didn't have an ECC DDR5 DIMM on set, but I did have DDR4 ones. So I can kind of show you this real quick. So this is a little Samsung DIMM, and what you'll see, and I just kind of, this is an ECC R DIMM, but you'll see that we have a total of nine chips across and that's eight chips plus one extra for parity. So one of the reasons that ECC memory is usually more expensive is because you're adding that ninth chip for that parity chip. There are a lot of different versions, but I'm just going to kind of keep this simple here. So what in-band ECC does is imagine that you don't have these like two extra parity chips here and you just have eight across. Then what you could do is you could say, well, you know, I can do something kind of like almost like RAID 5. I know that's a crazy simplification. People are going to get like really pissed off that I even use that. But think of it kind of like RAID 5, where you're taking some of the overall capacity of your memory pool, and you're using that to go do your parity. So what that means is that you're sacrificing some capacity for that error checking and correction. So we followed the guide, went into the BIOS and turned it on and it appeared to be working, which is pretty cool. And something that we weren't expecting because sometimes uh, you know you have issues with it with Windows is that even when we booted up into Windows, we saw a difference in the memory capacity for the ECC off and in-band ECC on, which I kind of wasn't expecting because I thought just it would work. So while it's not the same as having ECC memory, it does give you an ECC option for non-ECC memory, if that makes any sense. Or maybe it's easier just to say it's, a type of ECC that is probably better 
better than nothing. Now I know that was a huge oversimplification of in-band ECC. There are plenty of guides online if you want to go research that. Still, I think that has to make it into a key lesson learned. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at this Latte Panda Sigma. It's certainly an interesting little single board computer that I was not expecting to have all these features. And then uh, we started using it and it was like, oh, there's there's another feature. And oh, there's, there's a feature here. Oh, it has Thunderbolt. Oh my gosh. And it was just really interesting to go play with this and do things like turn on Arduino and just start playing with that because that was pretty easy. I hope you like this look. It's something that's a little different than a lot of the mini PCs that we normally review. If you did like this, well, why don't you share it with your friends and also give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.